by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. With a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! Outlaws, cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing old cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready to eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. A band of horsemen met in the woods near the main trail to Rand City. They were led by strangers in Rand City, outlaws Jake Gibson and Eddie Bowen. But Gibson and Bowen were notorious in the Texas border towns, hundreds of miles away. And now Jake Gibson was discussing a planned holdup in Rand City. Boys, Eddie got word from our pal in town. The money shipment arrived today. The bank closes at six. We'll move in on it at 5.30. Jake, who is this pal of yours and Eddie's who lines up these jobs for you? Sorry, Tex, we can't tell you. He uses a fake name in Rand City. He's an important man there. <laughs> Why, his best friends are the head of the bank we're going to rob and the sheriff. Huh? <laughs> the sheriff, can you imagine? <laughs> Sheriff Cy Fraser wasn't surprised when rancher Ward Maddock dropped into his office late that afternoon. He didn't know that Maddock was in reality Snake Curtis, one of the most notorious outlaws in the distant Southwest Territory. Hi, Mr. Maddock. Good to see you again. Sit down. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. I need to rest these weary bones. Tell me what's new on that stagecoach holdup that took place last week. Ward Maddock started a flow of questions and conversation to divert Sheriff Fraser. He was in the midst of a question when the door opened and an Indian entered. Oh, Sheriff. Well, Tonto. How good to see you. Come on in. Now, me stay just a few minutes. Stay as long as you like. Where's your good friend? Him not far away. Him tell me. Come see you. Fine, fine. Just a second, huh? Mr. Maddock, uh, excuse my friend me, will you? We're going in the next room to have a little private talk. Sheriff Fraser led Tonto into the adjoining cell room, closing the door behind them. Maddock waited a moment. Then he left his chair and hurried across the room to the sheriff's desk. The sheriff's gun holster was on top of the desk, and his revolver lay beside it. Maddock, moving quickly, removed the bullets from the gun, wrapped them in his breast pocket handkerchief, and placed the folded linen back into his pocket. 
He replaced the gun and hurried back to his chair. Through the window, he saw a body of horsemen dismount in front of the bank across the street. They adjusted bandanas across their faces and ran up the three stairs leading to the building. Bank President Jason Sterling and three employees were placing stacks of money into the safe when the masked bandits entered. Raise where you are. This is a holdup. What is it? All right, we have all the money. Tie up those people and we'll get out. Hey, old guy, here's a gun. Well, use yours, Andy. Shoot. Across the street, Sheriff Fraser and Tottle entered the office from the cell room as the sound of gunfire was heard outside. Hey, Tottle, those were shots. Ward Maddock, white-faced, rose from his chair. Sheriff, those shots, I think they looked through window. Masked men right from bank. Get out of my way, Maddock. Wait till I get my gun. It's robbery. We can't let them... I'm sorry, Sheriff. I didn't mean to bump into you. Out of the way, Maddock. The bandits were mounting their horses as Tonto and the sheriff ran into the street. Stop! Stop in the name of the law! Hey, look, the sheriff! Ah, them get away. Tonto fired, hitting one of the crooks. The other crooks returned the fire and sent men and women scurrying for cover. Tonto continued to shoot, and two more of the bandits fell from their horses. Meanwhile, the sheriff's gun clicked harmlessly. Well, I'll be... It's empty. The gun is empty. My sight... I'm hit. The sheriff fell to the ground unconscious. Tonto kept firing after the retreating outlaws. And not all get away. At that moment, Ward Maddock rushed from the office. Hey, sheriff, all right? As he spoke, one of the wounded bandits fired from the ground at Tonto. Oh! The bullet went wild and caught Maddock in the shoulder. As the bandits disappeared into the hills, frightened and curious men began to emerge from their places of cover. Among them, Dr. White. As the doctor examined Sheriff Fraser, other men appeared on the scene. Among them was Deputy Bill Allen. With gun drawn, he ran to where outlaw Tex Garland and the other wounded bandit were rising unsteadily to their feet. Stand right where you are, you coyotes. You're under arrest. Now take him into the sheriff's office, put him in a cell, and bandage him. The doctor will get to them in his own good time. Come on, you two. Get moving. Bill Ward Bellock was shot, too. Uh, me try and fix him. Me know how. Here. Me, look at arm. Maybe fix it. Okay, boy. I'll use my bandana to stop the flow of blood. Dr. White can banish me later. Oh. Ah, see, I'm hurt. You're not able to reach bandana. Me, get it. Get your hands away. Bandana right here. Oh, me. Oh, oh me sorry. Toto, in withdrawing the bandana from Maddox's pocket, saw two objects fall from its fold onto the ground. Oh, them bullets. Me pick them up. Get back. I'll do that. There. There. They're bullets from my gun. I left it at home. That's why I couldn't help before. You, Injun. I'm Bill Allen, deputy in charge now that the sheriff's hurt. What were you doing in the sheriff's office? Bill, I think he was sent as a decoy to attract the sheriff's attention while those outlaws robbed the bank. Oh, that lie. Me friend, the sheriff. Me shoot three robbers. He's right, Mr. Maddock. A lot of people saw him get them. Uh, Mr. Maddock, the sheriff's being carried to Dr. White's office. You'd better go there, too, and let the doctor treat you. All right. That's what I'll do. Injun, come into the sheriff's office, huh? I'd like to ask you some questions. Ah. As Tonto followed Deputy Bill Allen into the sheriff's office, a hastily formed posse set out in pursuit of the bank robbers. Inside, Tonto offered a silver bullet to the deputy and identified himself. Allen was impressed. As Tonto prepared to leave, he glanced in at one of the two prisoners, a man having his arm bandaged. The Indian frowned in thought. Oh, me think me know that, hombre. Who is he? Me not sure. Not remembered name. Only face. Well, we'll find out as soon as he's fixed up. Ah. I'll me go now. Come back soon. <laughs> Tonto returned to the Lone Ranger's camp and told the masked man of the robbery and its aftermath. The Lone Ranger was grim. Tonto, this man Maddock you mentioned, do you say he had bullets in his pocket? Ah, but him not have gun. I think we better find out about that fellow. He tried to accuse you of being a decoy for the crooks. Uh, but him friend, the sheriff, him get shot too. By a bullet meant for you. Oh, that's right. 
bullet go wild. Easy, silly big fellow. Easy, Scott. Easy, fellow. How long we'll stay in this part of the country till those crooks are captured, no matter how long it takes. Kimo Sabi. Now me know. Hold it, Silver. Hold it. Toto, what is it you know? Name a crook in Huskow. Who is he? You almost say name just now. You say, no matter how long it takes. Takes. That word make me remember him. How? Because name a crook is Tex. Tex Garland. The gunslinger from Texas? Ah. Uh, him belong to Jake Gibson gang. Tonto, the Gibson Eddie Bowen gang is the worst outlaw band in Texas. Tex Garland was their top gunslinger, too. Kimasabi, them not do anything in Texas in a long time. That may be because they moved up here. It may have been their gang that held up the bank today. All right, let's get to Rand City and find out. Monsieur! Get him up, scout! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Darkness had fallen in Rand City when Tonto left the Lone Ranger in a grove near the end of the main street. The Indian went to the sheriff's office and returned shortly. Oh, scout. Oh, Kim Sabi, me tell deputy you here. Him say, come to doctor's office. Him going to leave back door open. You know how to get to the office? Ah, we ride behind buildings. It's not far. Come, scout. Come, come on, come. Sir, forward. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto entered through the rear door of Dr. White's home and office... Deputy Bill Allen introduced himself to the masked man. Then he said, The posse hasn't returned yet. The two prisoners we have refused to talk. How's Sheriff Fraser? Oh, he's come to in fine shape. Good. Doc White's having a hard time keeping him in bed. Doc's got him and Jason Sterling in bed in the next room. Uh, Sterling? Yeah, he's head of the bank. The bandits got him, too. But come inside, masked man. When I told the sheriff you'd be here, he could hardly wait. Right. In the room where Fraser and Sterling were bedded, the Lone Ranger was introduced to Dr. White and the bank president. After a brief talk with the lawman, the masked man told of Tonto's identifying Tex Garland and voiced the belief that the gang was that of Jake Gibson and Eddie Bowen. Jason Sterling spoke first. You must be right. Just before they shot me, one of the bandits called the other by name. It was Eddie. Jump in, toast stools. That was Eddie Bowen. It must have been. Now lie back there. Uh, Sheriff, I'd like to know something about this man whose name is Maddox. I can tell you about him. He's one of our best citizens. Maddox a right Say, man. that reminds me. I want to talk to Mass Man about something. About your empty revolver, Sheriff? Yeah. How'd you know about that? Otto told me about it. Also about Maddox being alone in your office while you and Tonto talked. And uh, there was a matter of the bullets in Maddox's handkerchief. Oh, oh, Quickly, Toto told of the bullets, and immediately a tide of recollections was loosed. Say, maybe you have something there. Maddox came into my office just a little while before the robbery. And I'm sure my gun was loaded when I left to talk to Tonto. When Tonto and I started after the crooks, he stumbled against us. 
I thought then it was an accident. He was trying to keep you from shooting at his pals, most likely. Sure. Even though he'd emptied my gun. But that reminds me of something. I told him last week about the money shipment we were to receive at the bank today. And when the stagecoach was held up, he was... Now, over... gentlemen, gentlemen, please, hold on. Maybe all those things you're surmising now are true. But then again, they might be mere coincidence. Well, I don't believe it. Now that I start thinking... You must give the man the benefit of the doubt. The man is presumed to be innocent until proved guilty. Yes, Dr. White is right. Without proof, nothing we say means anything. Let's find out if Maddock is guilty or not. How? Does anyone know where Maddock is now? When I finished treating him, he said he was going back to his ranch to rest. Good. Then listen, please. I have a plan. It involves Maddock and the two men in the jailhouse, Tex Garland and his partner. Oh, how do you figure to tie them up? It's you we'll tie up, Alan, what? not them. Huh? Now, let me explain. Sheriff, I hope you'll allow me to try this. The Lone Ranger outlined a plan that involved a great risk, but one that also promised a payoff. Shortly after he'd finished, the posse returned to town, and the leader reported to Deputy Bill Allen. Bill, we drew a blank. We followed the banners into the foothills, but it became dark then, and we lost our trail. There's nothing we can do now before tomorrow. Mel, that's where you're wrong. Get the posse together. I want to talk to them. They're going to be getting a lot of action tonight. Yes, sir, a lot of action. Half an hour passed before Deputy Bill Allen entered the sheriff's office. He went to the cell room and spoke to the man guarding Tex Garland and his partner. Go on and eat, Mel. I'll look after these two. Thanks, Bill. Here's the keys. I'll be back in an hour. The sullen outlaws in their cell ignored Bill Allen during the next ten minutes. He remained facing them, his back to the door. Suddenly, they saw behind the deputy the figure of a masked man emerge from the outer room... He held a gun in his hand, and he jammed it against Alan's back. All right, you freeze. Hey, what? Don't talk or I'll shoot. Good. I'll take your gun. There I have it. Well, who... who are you? A friend of the boys. Tex, I've come to free you. You guard, open that cell door fast. Yeah, yes. There you are. Come on out, boys. Thanks, pal. Who are you, anyway? Jake and Eddie sent me. Uh, Tex, take that guard's tie and belt and bind his ankles and wrists. Sure. Lefty, use his bandana to gag him. Right, Tex. Lefty, we should have known the boys wouldn't let us stay here alone. There. You gonna shoot him? Have the shots heard? Don't be crazy. You must be the pal Eddie and Jake have here in town, huh? The one who set up this job today? No, Tex, I'm not that pal. But I'm taking you to his place when we leave here. We're not going straight to the hideout? Uh, no, Tex. I have a message for you to give to Maddock. Maddock, huh? Mm. So that's the hombre's name. Say, uh, how are we going to get away from here? I have two horses for you in the woods behind this place. We'll leave by the rear door. Come on, Tex, Lefty. The masked man and bandits left the building, and within seconds, Toto entered the cell room. He used his knife to cut the bonds that tied Deputy Bill Allen after first removing the gag. Thanks. Uh, we go to Maddock Ranch now? Yes, your friends leading Tex and Lefty there in a roundabout way. We'll be able to get to Maddox before they do. Let's start. Uh -huh. On the way to the Maddox Ranch House, the Lone Ranger's careful questioning resulted in much information from the unsuspecting outlaws. When they reached a spot near the house, they stopped. The masked man said, Tex, Lefty, I've done all I'm supposed to do. Do you know your way to the hideout from here? Yeah, I do. Aren't you going there with us? No, I have other plans. After you've given my message to Maddox, go to the hideout by yourself. Well, thanks, pal. Thanks. All right. We'll see you. The Lone Ranger watched the outlaws ride up to the main entrance of the ranch. Come on, sir. Come on. Then he circled to the rear of the property and watched. In the moonlight, he saw a group of men move from the underbrush to the rear door of the house. He recognized Deputy Bill Allen in the lead. Good. They made it. You must hurry. Toto, come here. 
I see you got Bill Allen here in time. Ah. We keep watch. Could you come with Crooks? Hello, what about the members of the posse who are to follow Tex and Lefty when they leave Maddock? Them waiting trees down the road. You not worry, Kimasabi. Them good men. Them be able to follow Crooks to hide out, not be seen. They'll capture Jake Gibson, Eddie Bone, and their gang. Because Tex and Lefty are going directly to the hideout. Uh. What we do now, Kimasabi? Those crooks gave me information on all the holdups they've committed and where. We're going to Sheriff Fraser in Rand City and tell him everything. It'll help when those outlaws go to trial. Come on, come on, come on. The man known as Ward Maddock, his arm bandaged, answered the rapping on his door. Two men pushed past him and then turned. Tex spoke rapidly. Eddie and Jake sent us. You're the pal we've had here in town, aren't you? What? Lefty. This fellow's name isn't Maddock. Huh? Say, aren't you Snake Curtis? Yes, but never mind that. How did you get out of the jailhouse? Why are you here? I told Eddie and Jake I didn't want anyone but them to make contact with me. They want to see you right away. Right away? Why? I'm supposed to go meet them after midnight for the payoff. I'd be a fool to leave the ranch at this hour. Wait. How did you get here without being seen? A master hombre brought us here. He wouldn't tell us who he was. He's not one of the regular gang. He must work undercover like you do. You know who he is? No. I don't want to know who you two are either. Tell Jake and Eddie I set up no more jobs for them. Tell them to leave my share of the money at the hideout. I'll pick it up tomorrow or whenever I'm sure the coast is clear. Now go. All right. We did what we was told. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hope no one saw them come here. We did, Maddock. Curtis. Bill Allen. The posse. Don't go with that gun. You're covered. What is this? You were listening from the kitchen? Yes, we know everything there is to know. It's not legal. It's against the law to break into a house like you've done. It's more against the law to break out of prison as you did, Snake Curtis. Snake. The name sure fits you. But you'll be caged again. Oh, no, I'm not. You're not going to take me. Grab him. Come here, you. Sit up. That's my wounded arm. It hurts. And this is a gun in your back. Put the cuffs on a mail. Wounded arm or not. Sure. Uh, those two double crosses bringing you here like that? They brought us here, Curtis, but they didn't know. No more than they know they'll be leading the biggest posse we ever had to their hideout. Listen. There they go now. It's... It's all over, huh? Yes. For you and the rest of your pals. And it's over not because of me or any of this posse. It's because of an engine named Tonto and his pal, the Lone Ranger. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. When you have your eyes on the stars, it's good to know champions are made, not born. Take basketball champion Bob Cousy, spectacular forward of the Boston Celtics. When Bob was just a lad of five, he practiced on the family drive, learned to pass, to shoot, to fake, and gave himself this one big break. He ate his Wheaties every flake. Today, Bob sparks that Boston team, still eats his Wheaties with fruit and cream. Champion Bob Cousy. When he was five years old, 20 years ago. It's steady going with Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Come on, Bob, drive right in there. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger.
adventure is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC.